Yo, yo, yo. My name is Philip. I am here at 64 Audio, where I'm always, because I work here. Today we are going through all of our Universal IEMs and opening them. The U18T is no exception, I think. Now with these boxes, with the U18T, 12T, Forte Trio, the boxes are a little bit different than the U18S, 6T, some of the products that we've released in the past year. Going back to that design for the packaging, looks a little bit um, more matte with a little bit more gloss on the image of the IEMs. Um, again, real image, real photo of the IEMs, um, not a render. Pretty cool. On the back, we do have a bit of an exploded view. Now this is a render. Kind of with the new design, we kind of took that idea from this and wanted to make it a little bit more minimal, a little bit more exploded with a little bit more detail. This is just kind of a, if you if you kind of like squished it all together, you'd make the IEM, you know what I mean? Just kind of like. We went with a bit more information about the products right on the package. So you pick it up at the store, you take a look at it, you read almost everything there is to know about the product on the package. And you get a little bit of a kind of x-ray view of the U18T right there. So yeah, go on the site, read through a bit more about it. That's kind of all the information you get on here. Again, the this image kind of shows you a really good up close shot of what that looks like with the red shell that a bit of orange uh, faceplate, and then that chip, famously with the U18T and the Forte, is a copper chip. It is real copper that has been patinaed. Um, so kind of um, a way of, of expediting that aging process uh, that we use here. So each faceplate is unique. Every single one that you get will be slightly different than than the others, which is you know is unlike the. U12T and the Trio and the U6T, um, where it's all uniform and that's kind of the goal. With this, it's supposed to be unique per ear. So, boom. So, since we filmed the original unboxing videos a couple months ago, we filmed them all at the same time. We have actually updated the contents of the packaging for these four models. So to better match the U18S, the U6T, the Duo, and the Neo uh, contents, which we also, that's the most recent one we updated. Um, we heard from our customers. They all really liked the tip holder, the Apex module holder, and especially the new cable. So we just went ahead and updated all of them. And that being said, making the content of the remaining four unboxing videos slightly irrelevant. So we're just gonna cut this part in. Remix, we're, we're just gonna put this in for all four of them and you'll get a very clear idea of what's in them. And to make that happen, I literally took the units from the retail shelf and this time we'll actually get the peeling off of the of the wrapper, which will add to the contentiness of this content. So with that being said, this is what's in the boxes for Forte, U18T, U12T, and Trio. Again, very similar to what you'll see in the other boxes, but we just decided to kind of make this very obvious intrusion into the, the video to make it very, very blatant and obvious. So, let's do it. Let's open this guy from scratch. We will cut into it a little bit. And we'll start with the Forte. This is a B-Stock unit, FYI. Every once in a while we have B-Stock units available on the website. Sorry, I should talk while I'm not doing this. We have B stock units available on the website in a special section of the website where they're usually 20% off retail. So that's, you know, minor cosmetic imperfections or a return that's been refurbished. But yeah, check out that section. Anyway, back to the noise. Anyway, so Forte. 
said B stock unit, but usually the cosmetic B stocks are so minor that it's actually hard to tell which ones are B stock. It's like we're very meticulous about cosmetics, and so you know, you might get lucky with one where you actually won't even be able to find the flaw that we saw. So yeah, here it is. The Forte packaging, as well as the others, has been updated to look like this. Like I said, um, it's very similar to the U18S, which kind of started us on this whole um, adventure with the, the new leather case, the, the tip holder. Like I said, the tip holder was actually kind of designed around the same time as the U18S, so it has that kind of crystalline looking structure to it. Um, but yeah, so what you get is, the, along with this new um, actual foam cutout, which the foam cutout used to be a, um, a cutout of the actual IEMs with the cable attached to it. Not anymore, now the foam cutout is uh, the two circles for the two halves of the leather case. So we start with that. We start with the, whoops, try that again. The contents are put in there in the shape of these two sides of the leather case. So we'll start with the top half of it, which has the um, tip holder. And the tip holder is made to hold um, three different types of tips in three different sizes. So a pair of a pair of each. Um, we have our True Fidelity foam tips, which are kind of a unique foam blend that we've been using for a while. It's great for just kind of pushing them into place. They don't necessarily need to actually like squeeze them first and wait for them to expand in your ear. That's kind of why we like them so much. You just kind of put them on the IMs and you just seat the IMs. You kind of nudge them into place and they kind of have enough give to go into place, but also to stay there. And this particular foam tip, I actually like using personally um, with IEMs where the high end is, is, or the top end, the high frequencies are very important on how you perceive them. For example, the Forte and the U18T especially, uh, I like using the foam tips just because it, it doesn't accentuate the top end any more than it, than it already is. As opposed to our next one, the spin fit tip, which adds a little bit to that. You know, there is, it essentially extends the, the nozzle of the IEM just because they sit over the, over the in-ear, giving a little bit more space. So it kind of creates a, a horn for the high frequencies. The spin fit tips, I end up using them for um, IEMs like Trio, like Neo, U18S, Duo. I, I actually like kind of what it does in certain circumstances. And to me, they're the most comfortable. They feel like they go into place the easiest and stay there the, the most consistently. And then our favorite little silicone tips. These are the ones that we've been using for a really long time. These are probably the most accurate of the tips. Um, the kind of wide nozzle version. They sit right down to where the nozzle of the IEM ends. And yeah, that will give you the absolute most accurate response. That's what we test with, that's what we develop the IEMs with, are these wider nozzle uh, silicone tips. So yeah, give them all a try. It's nice to have all three of them just because, you know, especially with the IEMs that have removable Apex modules, you have all of those to, um, to change your frequency response as well as these three versions of the tips. Each one of them will give you a slightly different flavor and you know, if you're listening to a rock track, you might use one. If you're listening to, you know, really electronic track, you might use another. I would really encourage people to actually delve into these a little bit more, which I, I think the audiophile community needs no more encouragement as far as tip rolling. That's a very, very long and difficult subject. <laughs> so the new case, the previous case was kind of a dark gray, almost uh, could be seen as brown in, in certain light. This one is straight black, this leatherette, um, I think it's bonded leather. Um, it has our logo printed onto it, has a nice kind of felt lining. It's a rigid case, you know, it's it'll it's tough. It'll actually keep your IEM safe, but it's nice. It kind of matches the, the sense and the feel of the IEMs more than uh, say our previous case, which was a custom uh, plastic case. 
So that's the new lid for the case. It'll stay there, oh my, perfect. And then there's a couple things that that are kind of placed in the packaging that are not the most relevant, I would say, to kind of universal IMs, but are still very, very uh, usable and should be used. For example, the cleaner, which comes with all of our IMs. The custom IMs go a little bit deeper in the ear, so this is a little bit more crucial, keeping them clean, getting in there, and making sure that there's no wax or debris buildup on, especially the mesh of the, of the um, there's a there's a mesh that protects that Tia driver and just making sure that nothing gets gets on there or stays on there. That's the key is getting it off. So, but the universal is not so much. We don't see a lot of wax and debris issues with, but still using this after every IM usage is really the best way to make sure that your IMs won't need to come back here for service for a really long time. So yeah, it's got the brush, got the little wire cleaner on the end of it really great. The shirt clip, and I mentioned this in some of the other videos, it can be a very handy thing to use with universal IEMs. Um, traditionally, they are used by um, custom IEM, pro audio, live musicians, that sort of thing to keep the cable from kind of jerking your neck back if it gets caught on something. You know, they'll, they'll, um, they'll snap it to the back of their shirt or something like that. Um, but for this use, it's great for cable microphonics. That's what I use it for personally. I know it's something that maybe a lot of kind of audiophile folks will put to the side. And then here's the kind of biggest change is the cable. This is something that, you know, I, I regret that you won't see this part of the other videos that we shot because they made a pretty good case for our old cable. Um, but now we don't have to visit that anymore. I will make a case for this new one. This new cable is amazing. Um, it's been very well received by our customers, the audiophile community. You know, it's a, it's still similar to our previous cable. It's still a very high quality wire. The actual, what it's actually made up of, extremely low resistance, silver plated copper, you know, something that does the least amount of impact on what the IEM is supposed to be right out of the box. This cable is, you know, it's something that would compete with any of the third party cables that you might find out there. And it's branded and it looks great. You know, it's got a, um, a straight 3.5 millimeter end that has our logo on there. Um, I believe it's aluminum. And then on the bifurcation end, same sort of thing this metal bifurcation with our logo printed on there. These come terminated in 3.5, that's standard. If you really feel like you want a different termination, I would just reach out to info at 64audio.com to see if we can you know, send you a unit with a different end to it. It would probably be a little bit of an upcharge for you know, 4.4 Pentacon or a, or a um, 2.5 millimeter balance. But yeah, the cable is a lot softer. It's a, got a little bit more of a thicker feel to it. Um, definitely a lot less prone to tangling. And then the big one, no memory wire. Um, you see it's kind of wrapped to give that, that natural curve to the end of it, which is great because it'll, you know, still go in the right direction. But there is no actual metal wire that's, that's giving it that, that shape. So that's a big one, I know. Um, folks in this space were very much against the memory wire. Although I feel like many of them didn't give it as good of a, as big of a chance as they should have. Sometimes I like it too, sometimes I don't. But these new ones don't have it. You have that classic 64 audio two pin connector, 0.78 millimeter in diameter, the pins are. That's very important to remember about our universal products. That's the size of the pin socket. Yeah, that's kind of, that. this part of it looks very familiar. It's the basically the exact same thing. And so with the Trio and Forte, you are missing one thing and I'll show you in the, um, in the other packaging what you get. Um, but that's that's it. We've also updated this little message. Uh, it no longer says what it used to say. I think it was like 64 fam. Now it's our kind of tagline here, feel, create. This little guy pops out and the ears come nicely situated in this custom foam insert. And the one thing that the 12T and the U18T have 
is, I'll actually, whoops, show you. It's this Apex module holder. So, originally developed to release with the U18S. You can actually see this one is from a U18S. It has those branded Apex modules. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but yes, the U18T and the U12T, along with the other IEMs that use uh, replaceable Apex modules, come with the Apex module holder, and as well as you know these other accessories. Oh yeah, don't forget the sticker. That's also there too. But yeah, this is the updated packaging. Back to your regularly, regularly, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, you know, we'll finish off the video talking about the the various models and how they sound and stack up. So yeah, thank you. Sorry about the little intrusion, but there you go. That's the update. I think the U18T might be the most bam look to them with that orange, with the red, um, and then that that red kind of orange patinaed copper, um, and that copper is coated in a you know a little bit of a little bit of material to protect the copper. So you're not gonna be actually touching the copper itself, it's coated, um, and it also protects the logo that's printed on there. Um, but if we take this little guy out, handcrafted with love, very nice, um, we see nothing. There's nothing in there. Usually there's something in there. In the U18T, there's nothing in this spot right here. But you can put something in there. You can put this in there. Moment of truth, let's get the in-ears out. And one thing you'll notice between the um, U18T and the U18S is that although they have the same amount of drivers, the U18T is slightly slimmer in shell depth than the U18S. But yeah, let's plug these in and kind of see what they're all about. Personally, I like using the foam tips with the U18T, our true fidelity foam tips. I think it kind of gives the, the top end uh, a bit closer response to what I think the custom sound like, and that's kind of my preference. One thing that people will definitely notice going between customs and universals, whether it's the retail units or the demo units in certain cases, is you will have a perceived difference in frequency response. And they are made identically the same, the components are the same, they test virtually the same, but the shape of your ear is different. With the U18T, I like to get them as deep in as possible, as, as really as focused in, in my ear canal as possible to get my desired high frequency response out of them. You know, with some of the other tips, some of the other uh, silicone tips, like the spin fits we carry in some of our other models, I think the top end is a bit too much for me, but that's for me personally. And I like using these with the M20 modules to put them on. And like I said, with the foam tips, they're really meant to be, um, just kind of push them in and then leave them be, as opposed to squeeze the foam tips and then put them in and wait for them to expand. That's why we like these so much and we kind of chose this material for them. Yeah, there we go. With the memory wire and the cable, you just kind of push down on the back of your ear and it really like snugs the, the shell of the IEMs up into the canal. Yeah, let's go ahead and plug these in and have a listen. Dragonfly, Cobalt, shout out uh, AudioQuest. You can buy it on the website when buying your in-ears. Let's have a listen. All right, U18T. Yeah, these were one of the first, along with the Forte, IEMs in the universal space which utilized our TIA technology. TIA is tubeless in-ear audio. Uh, it's something that in the U18T specifically, the high frequency driver and then that single bore design is taken from from the kind of design concepts of TIA. You really notice it in the smoothness of the high frequencies. Usually it is difficult to have something that is detailed and extremely clear and airy in the highs without getting a few kind of very annoying narrow peaks. And that's something that TIA solves, I think in my opinion, um, especially if you can get them seated in properly. Uh, they, these are a, what I would consider as close to a reference monitor as possible, just in terms of flat out response and, you know, flat out perceptually, you know, the way that you hear them is as close to a mastering engineer's 
monitor as I think you could possibly get. I think that's where the U18T sits. I've personally been using them, you know, years before I even worked here. I love this model. I think it's, there's a reason why it kind of was a major contributing factor to putting us where we are now, kind of elevating the brand. Check them out for yourself. These have been around for a few years and they're still super relevant and they sound amazing. Have a listen, find them in your local shop. If you're internationally or if you're um, domestic, there are some domestic retailers or reach out to us. And yeah, have a listen, have a look. There they are, U18T.